welcome back to building my first model railway and uh, what well, is episode 30 uh, of this series uh, and firstly a big massive thank you to everyone who's watching and subscribing amazingly I've now got over a thousand subscribers which is just uh, it's just unbelievable really so uh, thank you very much and hopefully I must be doing something right uh, to, to get the subscribers so that's brilliant uh, this is a short video really to give you an update uh, to what's happening with my track following uh, the last video where I had some issues with the points and to uh, and to show you what I'm doing in converting from DC to fully DCC. Um, so hopefully you're going to find that useful. I'm doing it without doing any soldering because I really hate soldering. I'm not very good at it. Uh, I know practice makes perfect but I just I'm just trying to avoid it in truth. Um, but I do want to go fully DCC, so I do need to sort of um, improve the feeds to, to my layout. It is running okay, even just with a single uh, feed. So um, if you're not into putting a bus bar in, but you want DCC, you can do it. You know, my track does work, but um, some of the DCC locos do stutter on a, a few areas. So I'm just um, gonna just add a few extra feeds uh, to do that, but do it without soldering. So uh, hopefully you find this video useful. Thanks very much again for uh, subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to uh, press the, uh, the, the icon um, down below. Uh, and uh, let's get into doing some wiring. Thanks very much and speak to you again soon. So a quick update from my previous uh, video. As you can see, uh, the points uh, are working now and not causing a short. And I'll just move that so I can reach the controller and uh, hopefully move it across in that direction. Just zoom in. You can see, you get across those points, nice. No problem, the point set that way and front back that way, it still continues to operate. So that's uh, just shut them, shut them off. That's good news. Um, and I don't really know what the problem was. Uh, I literally just went and bought a new uh, left hand curve point. That's the one that was in there before causing the short. Um, clearly, something's uh, wrong with it. Don't know what so um so yeah that's a brand new one and that's working fine so that is good news but uh, having that issue um and running the dcc uh, on this inner loop um sort of made me think about the whole wiring for the layout um so just to update you originally um both uh, the inner and outer line were dc then I bought a couple of DC locos and an EZ control, and you'll see that in an earlier episode. Uh, and therefore, I just wired the outside line to DCC and kept the inside line and the shunting yards as DC. And to do that, um, the only crossover between the outside and the inside loop is this single crossover here. And I put uh, insulate, isolation fish plates, this plastic fish plates in there. Um, so there's no electrical connection between the outer and the inner line uh, and that enabled me to to run them uh, on separate and i literally just had a single feed from the outside into my dcc controller my ez controller and a single feed um, for the inner loop to um, my dc controller and then uh, on, on the second track from that controller uh, i had the shunting yard i'll just swing you around and show you the controllers if you haven't seen before so um, that's the uh, basic EZ DCC controller, uh, and that's my um, my vector Morley vector controller. And I had uh, track one as the uh, the inside loop, and track two was doing this uh, the shunting yard here. You can see in front. But what I've now decided is I've got quite a few DCC sound locos, and I really like them. And I think um, the DCC does run a lot smoother uh, and a lot more realistic. So I. Um, really do prefer that so i decided that i want to go over to dcc predominantly with the whole layout because the trouble at the moment having it split is you can't mix the traffic at all and it limits sort of the operation and the play value so um so yeah so i've decided to have it all dcc but still want to keep the option of flick, flicking back to dc every now and then to run some of my older uh, stock um so uh to do that i'll say i, I 
although it does run okay with a single feed, I know generally in the in the sort of modeling DCC industry that most people certainly have more than one feed to it to try and uh, ensure there's continuity. Now on my track, or most of my track is just set track, set Hornby set track, um, and it's uh, isolation um, points and that as well. Uh, so now I do know you can get clips that you can buy that I will get to um, make them completely live all the time. So I'll do that for the all the inner side loop. Um, but I also want to add some extra feeds. So I've already put one in here, uh, but I do want to put some more around the layout and sort of have a bit of a, a, a bus bar to supply them. But uh, I thought in order to keep the two options of switching between the two, I need to have almost two bus bars so that I can, you know, I can still switch one over to DCC, DC, sorry, from DCC. And I hate soldering is the other point. Um, so, um, I, you know, I've watched lots of YouTube videos where they do all the droppers and they sold all the droppers onto the, onto each section of the track. And, I, and I've done a bit of soldering, don't enjoy it, not very good at that. Managed to melt um, a ring filled motor with a soldering iron, I accidentally touched the, the plastic cogs and melted it as well. So just really don't enjoy uh, soldering at all. So I wanted to do this conversion without soldering. Um, and I've also learned that when I've uh, have done, even when I was doing the, doing the layout on DC, when I had the odd issue, it was handy to be able to um, just disconnect the block connector on the feeds and just work out why a certain area was causing me issues. So being able to sort of, um, you know, take some of the power feeds off if there is an issue, I think it's quite useful as well. So, uh, so I was looking on the internet and on YouTube of options for being able to, being able to do it without um, soldering. And the, the two options, or the option that I came up with is first is to do what I've already been doing, which is using um, soldered fish plates. Then you can see here, um, we've got the positive and the negative and they're just fish plates. But someone that, that's good at soldering has um, taken time to solder the wires onto the fish plates. And then they're quite easy to connect in. You literally just replace the fish plates that are on the um, set track um, with these fish plates and you can drill them so they're in size as a single hole. And when, when it's ballasted, you can't see it at all. Um, and now I know I have read that sometimes that, you know, this isn't quite as efficient as soldering directly onto it. Um, but to be honest, my soldering is so bad that I'm sure that this soldering and this fish plate will do a better job than I could do. So, um, so yeah, I'm happy to do that. And I've got about a dozen pairs. So, you know, for my layout, that was sufficient to add a lot of extra droppers in around it. And then to connect the um, bus bar, I was looking at just using the block connectors, but I found these um, on, the, uh, on eBay. And basically uh, they do a single and a double. Um, so, there's a single. And basically, I don't have to zoom in, I don't know if you can see, but it's got track, that one's got track one, track two. That obviously is a single track. But it allows you to have your bus bar wires coming in to there and then connect your dropper wires into there for your positive and negative and your positive and negative. Uh, and on the single one, that's just for obviously a, a, a single bus bar and a connector. Because I want to literally have two bus bars, and what I'll do is I'll run the um, fish plate connectors sort of in parallel next to each other, so I can each each pair can then have be connected to uh, the track one and track two, and then by doing that, these two bus bars can go back to my controller, and I can then have a switch that uh, that allows me to switch the um, track two, which will be my outside track, back over to DC. And because it's, it is still only isolated and the only connection is this, which is isolated, I'll be able to still run the outside on DC because um, that bus will just be connected by here and I'll just have a switch between the DC and the DCC controller. Hope that all makes sense um, and I hope I know what I'm talking about because I haven't done it yet, but that's, that's the plan. And, yeah, and in my mind, I think it's going to work. Um, so it's just going to take a bit of effort to uh, take some of the track apart and, and put some uh, droppers in around the track um, in, you know, in, in 
equally sort of spaced out and to make sure there's sufficient power feeds for certainly the sidings and the loco shed here. For instance, at the moment, because the power is all this side of this point, um, if I switch this to actually go across, there is no power feed from here because further around there, there's a break for the bridge. So the bridge has got power, but this section here relies on power coming from all the way around this side. So at the moment, as soon as I switch that over, um, and the power gets, you know, this section is in effect isolated, especially as even the outside power isn't coming in because of the, the, the uh, isolation here. So I'll definitely need to put some droppers in here, maybe another one in here and another one around there. So yeah, so around the layer, I'll space them out, connect them to uh, these blocks, and I've got a pack of these. They're only about, you know, about £1.50 each. And so I've got a pack of those, connect them to the over in the layout, and then run the bus bar back to the, um, the control as you saw earlier. And then have a switch, so I can switch between the two. And then hopefully that will allow the whole layout to run predominantly on DCC, but when I want to be able to switch over and just run some of my, my um, older locos just on the outside loop on DC. So uh, that's the plan. I'll uh, make a start and I'll try and film a bit, a bit as I go so you can see what I've done and hopefully it'll be working in the end. So I'm now wired a couple up, so I wanted to show you and hopefully you can see uh, see what uh, what's what from all the wires. I've got a lamp under here as well to help me show you better. I'm um, just move that over there, so it's not going to shadow me too much. Okay, so if you can see that. So if I just describe, you've got two lines coming, they actually come from this connector that's on the bridge but they are the outside lines there and the inside lines and they go into there track one track two and then they continue out this side track one track two so that's my bus wire there that goes along and then I've got my two sets of droppers one set here which goes into track two and one set here which goes into track one and they're just wiring just like a normal block connector and then if I follow them along, you've got my bus wires, track one and track two going along there. I don't know how well this is going to film. But then they go up to the next connector. And again, the same, you've got track one and track two. And then I've got the two bus wires dropping down from the top that you saw me just drill in place uh, above. They're almost directly above. And then the wires continue off round and I'll just carry on doing that around the layout. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Let me just stand up. So if I go above, that's the two droppers there for that one you just saw. And then the two on the bridge, uh, which I did previously, because I had to do the bridge to get separate supply. And you can see there, you can't really see them. Uh, that's the wires there. So when it's um, ballasted and painted, and that's the other set there, you can't see them at all. And, and then I've just done a test run and I'll just uh, fire up the class 47 and I'll show you. It's the first time I've actually gone across the connector between the two, so I'll just bring it around. So there she comes. But the first time I've been able to do is to ask it to test. So now I know that there's power running in here and I've gone across the, the connections. Um, but more importantly, when I go this way now, because there's power coming all the way around, we can actually have this across, and hopefully it will go across the junction from one track to the other track. Nice and smooth there like that. Which I've not been able to do before, because obviously one track's been DC and one's been DCC. 
um, and then if I switch that one back across and bring that back and hopefully you'll see that the tractor is working perfectly all the way around as well Yeah. And across the bridge. So yeah, that all seems to, as first test, I've only done the two at the moment, just really want to check that it works fine. There's good continuity. Uh, the fed easy to connect up, it's just a matter of uh, you know trimming the wires and putting them in and screwing them on. So the next stage will be to um, add uh, I've got one that I put in earlier there, so I'll do another one that side. I'll do uh, a couple in here as well, and on the siding, and then probably at most bend, because at bend actually it's actually easier to lift the wires I've worked out, that, and the track, should I say, that where I've laid the track down, because the bend is a, there's a bit of room for manoeuvre, so it's quite easy to take out the old fish plates and put in the fish plates with these, um, those ones there with the droppers. So I'll do one on that corner and then I'll do uh, another one, another set on this corner and uh, a set into here, into this separate uh, yard. So it's got separate power feeds as well. I might even do a couple in there and maybe one round by the underground as well. Uh, and then I've already got one, a couple here. And I think the creek got one up there as well. So on most corners, and that means I'm going to have a dropper every couple of metres all the way around the layout. So yeah, pleased with that. And then um, and then what I will do then is once I've done that, I can then wire it in for DC and DCC by just having a switch. And I'll, I'll show you that once that's all done. But for now, it's just a matter of getting on and uh, putting all the other droppers in and fish plates and, um, and, and putting these connector blocks in, which... Uh, these ones here, which uh, yeah, which, which are working really well. I'll put a link in the description to them. Um, there's no affiliate or anything, but uh, but I found them good. So uh, yeah, if uh, if you fancy doing something similar, then I'll put a link in so you can um, get them yourself. Uh, so I'll end this video now because um, I've got a lot of work to do, and I won't wait to finish it all off. But I'll show you in the next episode. Hopefully, it all finished with the switching as well for DC and DCC. So thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh, and I'll speak to you again soon.